Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us in the Launch Club, wherever you're watching from. Uh, my name is Francis AZ, the average salary in the UK for an IT professional ranges from £45,000 to £110,000. Yes, you heard me right, £45,000 to £110,000. Uh, contrary to what you may think, you do not need to come from a science background to be able to work in the IT sector. This podcast is for you. If you are in the UK looking at career option for your children or you are looking at career option for yourself or you are abroad have the IT skill which is in high demand in the UK thinking of uh, relocating to the UK by the time you finish watching this podcast you have enough information to be able to make an informed decision before we start I've got a quick appeal to make please if you're watching it for the first time thank you for watching continue to watch and show your support by hitting the like video and share these videos or uh, if you are one of those already supporting me thank you for all your support today we have a legend in the house listen i know the word legend is often misused these days this legend we've got in the house he is originally from nigeria is an expert in cyber security he started off in it he has risen to the position of chief information uh, a security officer in one of the biggest companies in the UK. He is a legend. The only reason he's here today is because he wants to share information to inspire others. Without wasting your time, can you please introduce yourself to people? Thank you, Francis. And uh, first of all, before I say anything, I just want to say thank you for inviting me here. And, um, you know, I've worked a couple of things that you've done, Francis, and I was really inspired. So, of course, when you asked me to come on this, I felt that the honor is actually mine to be here, to be able to share this. And for all of you that are watching, very, very excited you know, to be part of this. And I hope that you take some value um, out of this. My name is Eddie Aquas, Francis said, I'm a cyber security professional. I've done that for a very, very long time. And you know, hopefully, you know, as we talk through today, you know, there might be things that you might pick up that might help on the journey that you are going as well. Because I also started from somewhere uh, as well, and uh, we'll get into that. You know, when we keep talking. So, Eddie, uh, before we start, so you just cast your mind back to the 17 years old. How did you get into uh, computing? Um. So when I was 17, um, I had an uncle. He was a pediatrician, yeah, he lived in the United States, um, in Chicago back then. And you know, the first thing that he bought me was a computer. And I don't know why he did that, uh, but that was the first thing that I got from him. And that really started my journey into IT. And my mom also used to have a business center. And for those of you who uh, might know what I'm talking about, a similar age that I am back then, internet was just coming into Nigeria. Uh, so there were a lot of business you know, centers and cafes that were springing up. My mom had one of those in the port. And I used to go there after school to help her out. So, you know, when it came to like, installing printers, installing software. You know, I was the resident expert for my mom back then. So I used to do everything for her when it comes to computing. So that sort of started my curiosity into computer. And I always wanted to understand what was making these things work. You know, why were they so amazing? And that curiosity made me do computer engineering back then in my university days when I studied in University of Ife. Um, which was one of the two universities back in Nigeria that offered computer engineering, that and University of New York. So that's where I got started, my love for computers started, my love for IT started, and really it started to shape the way that I looked at what my career was going to be like. My dad is an electrical um, engineer, so I always wanted to do something in that space, but I didn't want to do electrical engineering. So IT was where I started to find love uh, as well. Good. So how, when you left university, at what stage, when did you come to the UK? So I came to the UK in 2007. I think the first time I got to the UK was maybe two years before then, um, but not to study. You know, my sister was already living in the United Kingdom, so I came to visit her. And then that was when I started to you know, shape 
you know, my love for coming back here to do a master's degree. So when the opportunity came and it was the same uncle who was saying, listen, you know, you can come to the US, you know, and, you know, come and do a master's degree. I actually um, attempted to go to the US. So when I applied, you know, into schools in the US, um, in the North Institute of Technology, I actually got admission there, but I couldn't get a visa to get there. You know, so I thought to myself, goodness, is that the end of the dream? So I waited one more year and then I applied to the UK and then I got admission to Newcastle University. So I actually officially came to the UK to study in 2007. When you finish your master's in, what did you do your master's in? In signal processing. When you finish your master's, how did you get a job in the IT? Because a lot of people have been asking me, how can we get our first job? Um. I think my first job in IT, I knew that after my master's, I had a job at the time, um, but I knew that I needed to get back to IT. So what did I do? Um, I did a lot of applications and there is no shortcut to this. That it's a, it's, it, you have to apply to as many companies as possible. In fact, what I used to do was that I used to consider it like going to work. So I had a job that I was doing in the evening. Yeah. So in the morning, I would wake up and dress up as if I was going to work, but I was going to the library. So I still had my pass to the Newcastle University Library. So I'm going to the library and for five hours, all I was doing was applying to jobs. I was downloading job descriptions. I was reading them. I was applying to them. I was taking it like that was my job. Even though I wasn't getting paid, I was applying and applying. And then anytime there was a job fair, you know, there's a few ones, especially in the UK that are very, very popular. There was one that was in Birmingham in the NEC Centre. It used to be like a big graduate fair. You know, I went there a few times. Um, there were some graduate fairs in London. I went down there as well. Um, there were some in Newcastle. I went there as well. So I was doing everything within my power to get myself out there. Because you have to ask yourself the question, you know, you want a job, but people don't know you. Right? It's a little bit like marketing, promoting. How do you get your CV out there? So you need to use as many avenues as possible, as many channels as possible to get that. So I send my CV to a lot of people and then I started getting responses back. Now, I can't tell you what the ratio was, but I can tell you that I sent a lot. Okay. You know? So sending one or two is not enough. Okay. So you got your first job in software engineer so how did you how did you branch out from it to cyber security which is what a lot of people want to know um so that is very a very interesting story so i was working for a software company and luckily for me the company was a very big company with about 200 people and when you work for a smaller company they allow you to do lots of things so Today I will do something in IT, I will log on to a Linux system, tomorrow I might log on to an, a, a Windows system. And then something happened to the company, they were doing an audit, they were in the middle of an audit, and the person who was doing the audit fell sick and couldn't come in. So my boss came and said, I have an opportunity for you. So if you ever hear your boss say to you, I have an opportunity for you, just know that they're going to come to give you a lot of work. So, you know, as a Nigerian person, and I said to myself, listen, you know, when somebody says I have an opportunity for you, you jump, right? I don't know what the opportunity was, but I said, yes, I will do it. So my boss said, hey, listen, when in deep fix, the auditors are here. We need someone to help the auditors and we need to pass this order. Now, luckily for me, I was already doing IT. So the information that they wanted was either within my team or with teams that I had built relationships with. So what did I do? I went to leverage on those relationships and got the information. Gave it to the auditors and then the company passed the audit. So of course, that was my first significant you know, achievement in the company. Yeah. So that put my name out there. Uh, and then, you know, the CEO took notice. I was like, oh, who is this guy? It turns out that he was also an alumni, you know, of Newcastle University. Yeah. And he said to me, listen, do you like what you're doing? I said, no, because I had actually read something that every time you get an opportunity to speak to someone who is at an elevated level, when they ask you a question about what you want, 
don't try and underplay it. Tell them exactly what it was. So that kept in my head. So when he said, are you not happy with what you're doing? I said, no, I'm not happy. He goes, oh, okay. You know, what would you like? I said, I want to do more. He said, okay, leave it with me. I'll go and figure something out. So they now came back and said they will create a role called a security engineer and they will make me the first person to be in that role. So that's how I got into that role and that's how I started doing cyber security things. So someone who is already, who doesn't have a science background, who is thinking of going into IT, what would be your advice for them? So my advice for you would be, you know, stay curious, right? You know, so if you don't have a background, you know, in science, you don't have a background in IT, do some research, just know exactly what kind of IT roles are out there. And there are so many, because once you know what is out there, you start to understand what you need to get there. You know, so if you look at a role and it says that it's a IT administrator role, there's usually a job description. Yeah. Now you can you might look at the job description and it might look like a completely different language. Yeah. And and that's normal, right? Yeah. You know, because it's not something you're familiar with. Yeah. But what I would say is that Google is very, very useful. You can take every line in that job description and you can type it into Google and Google can tell you what that actually means. Good. So now you can start to ask the right questions. Right. You know, to someone and say, Oh, um, I'm interested in IT and there's this particular role that I'm interested in. How do I get that role? Yeah. Because you need to at least have something to aim at. Yeah. Or else it's difficult to ask the right questions so you get the right answers so that you can start to work towards that. But absolutely not having a science background or an IT background is not a barrier in getting it. What about for parents who want their children to study in I, to go into IT as a career? So for parents who want their, their children to go into IT, I'd say the first thing that I would say is that don't discourage them from being curious. Because one of the things that will help them to grow in an IT career is being curious. So when yeah. they're asking the questions, why is this, why is that? Think about ways that you can help answer the questions. And I know sometimes kids will ask you questions that you shouldn't answer them. But this is where as parents we need to be more creative. Now, practically, what I would also say is that a lot of companies do internships. Now, they are not always structured, uh, and sometimes you might have to ask the question, do you do an internship in your company? And you might be surprised to find out the answer will be yes. Now, most of this might be unpaid, but that's, that shouldn't matter, okay. because that's not the goal at this point. The point is that you want to expose the kids to as many things around IT as possible. And a lot of companies are very happy to do this because they're giving back to the society. Good. You know, so having young people come into their offices, spend a day, a life in the day of this person or that person and make a huge difference in that child's life and starts to create the first impressions that they can then build on into an IT career. Good. What about someone in Nigeria or someone abroad who is thinking of coming to work in the UK uh, in the IT sector? So, so if you're abroad and you're thinking about coming here, you know, the beautiful thing about, you know, the world as it is now, especially since the pandemic, is that we're really a global village right now. So there's a lot of things that you can do remotely. So I know that you might want to hear, you know, coming into the UK as the first thing. But the first thing I would say is that you can build experience even remotely. There are a lot of companies that are having roles that people can do from anywhere that they want, right? Because coming into a different country is a lot more than just the job itself. There are things that you need to know. You need to understand what the visa requirements are. You need to understand, you know, what places where you can actually live in that country. How do you get accommodation? There are lots of things that you need to figure out. But if you initially are trying to transition into an IT role, my advice wouldn't be move countries first of all. My advice would be find out what kind of role that you want to. Are there remote options? If they are, you want to start there. And trust me, when companies you know work with people remotely, there are always opportunities to bring those people into a country like UK or anywhere else. And then they might actually be the ones doing all the legwork for like visa and stuff that you don't have to worry about, you know? So if, if I knew that, 
you know, and that's what I'll be saying to a lot of people. Like companies actually apply for people to come over to the UK. You don't have to do it yourself. So if you have a remote opportunity, take advantage of that. You might not pay the big money initially, but remember you're building the expertise and experience that then makes you more valuable in the coming years. Good. Eddie, it's been a pleasure speaking to you. I'm sure our audiences have learned uh, one or two things. Guys, information is power. The difference between those who are successful and those who fail is having access to information and using it. I'm sure you, the information you have today, maximize it, use it for your benefit. Eddie, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much.